this week's project, we're gonna be making a levitation machine. What would possess me to make such a thing? Because I was promised a future full of levitating stuff like cars and legit hoverboards. No, no, yeah, that one. But the market hasn't provided them yet. I'm looking at you, Elon Musk. So in my efforts to expedite our floating future, I really, really, really wanna make something levitate. And how am I gonna do that? I have no idea. But I do have a table full of e-waste just begging to be tinkered with. So let's see what we can do. Here's a rough idea. Magnets are a great way to levitate other objects because of their natural ability to attract and repel. So if we make an electromagnet, we can control how strong the magnet is. Then we'll need some way to detect the distance of the bottom magnet so that we can tell how close or how far away it is. And then we'll need some type of brains that says if it's too close, push it away, and if it's too far, attract it. And when our magnet is in the middle of those two commands, oh my gosh, it's floating. Are you guys seeing this? All right, so what parts are we gonna need to make this magic thing happen? Let's just figure that out on the way. Okay, let's start with the electromagnet. Making an electromagnet sounds like sorcery, but it's really quite simple if you're a sorcerer. Okay, never mind. You just need some type of metal rod and some copper wire to wrap around it. I'm making like a wire container thing using rubber washers and painter's tape. And then just start wrapping the wire. I'm gonna use my whole spool, which is about 40 feet. Now, wrapping this much wire meticulously by hand teaches patience, self-restraint, oneness, and screw it, this is boring, I'm using a drill. To test it out, give it some juice and see if you can pick up something metal. This video is starting to look a lot more attractive now, doesn't it? Huh? Huh? Okay, moving on. Now, how are we gonna detect an object to know how strong or weak our electromagnet needs to be? One method is to use a Hall Effect sensor. Basically, it can detect magnetic fields and based on the strength of those fields, it outputs a corresponding voltage. And based on that output, you can adjust the electromagnet accordingly. You'll find this quite often in brushless motors. That would be perfect, except they're very hard to salvage, and I don't really have any readily available. So let's see what the next method requires. It uses an infrared emitter and an infrared phototransistor. The emitter takes voltage and turns it into infrared light, while the phototransistor takes infrared light and turns it into voltage. Using this method, whenever an object is passing between them, it reduces the amount of infrared light the phototransistor receives, therefore reducing its voltage output. And we can use that to adjust the electromagnet. Now, where to find an emitter and phototransistor? A good place to look is in old VCRs and DVD players. They're usually controlled by an infrared remote. So the remote will most certainly have an emitter. And on the VCR side, you'll always have an infrared receiver. But depending on your VCR make and model, you may also find some phototransistors in there. Mine actually has three. I prefer to think of it as a measure of my awesomeness and not because I'm ridiculously lucky. I took these LEDs and just soldered some extra wire to the leads to make them longer. Now we need a container holder thingy to hold everything together. And that's where these clementines come into play. Since I suck at woodworking, I'm just gonna retrofit this crate to use with our levitating device. That's right, crate, no more oranges for you, or clementines, or whatever, baby oranges. To make a spot for the infrared sensors, I'm taking the two uprights, a 3 16 drill bit, and I'm drilling five holes that are two fifths of an inch apart and two and three quarter inches from the top of the upright. I spaced the uprights with a three and a half inch inner measurement and then drilled a three quarter inch hole into the center of the top cross beam. Screw this into here and place the infrared sensors into the holes. Start with the hole set just below the bolt, and then you can adjust them later as needed. Now for the brain power in the form of an Arduino and a few other components. This is what's gonna make everything talk to each other, and here's how you wire it up. Let's start with the electromagnet. The first thing is to put a diode in between the leads so that there isn't any cross currents. Now we want to run one side to a 12 volt power supply and the other side to the middle pin on a MOSFET. Then take the far right pin on that MOSFET and connect it to the ground of the 12 volt power supply. Finally take the far left pin and connect it to the 11 port on the Arduino. Next let's take the IR LED and connect the ground leg to a ground port on the Arduino and the power leg to a 100 ohm resistor and then on to port 13 on the Arduino. 
Finally, take the photo transistor and connect the ground to a ground port and the power pin to the port A0 before wiring it to the 100k ohm resistor and then onto the 5 volt port on the Arduino. Here's what my beautiful breadboard looked like before I soldered all the components to a circuit board and arranged everything like this. It's not required, but I'm all about a nicely neat and organized presentation. If you're going for the rustic five-year-old with a hot glue gun art show motif. I gleaned the code from Simon Monk's Dangerously Mad website where this project originated. You can either copy it from there or download it from my project page at the link below. Plug in your Arduino, upload the code, plug in the 12 volt power supply for your electromagnet, and you should start to hear it hum. Beautiful. First, let's make sure the IR sensors are working. So pop open the Arduino serial console and type in a lowercase m. You should start to see two sets of values. And as you pass an object in between the sensors, the right value should get smaller or larger depending on which direction the object is going. Now enter a lowercase m again to turn the monitoring off. And at this point, you can take a magnet, the stronger the better, and hold it level with the IR sensors to see if you can get it to levitate. To tweak the strength of the electromagnet, you can type a lowercase b to decrease it and an uppercase b to increase it. For the best results, I'm using a really strong neodymium magnet. You can buy one of these online or salvage them from old hard drives. Then it's just a matter of tweaking it and tweaking it some more. Aha! Ladies and gentlemen, we have achieved stability. Levitation. All that tweaking finally paid off. Now, the longest I had a magnet levitating was only a couple minutes. And one thing to note is that the longer the electromagnet runs, the hotter it and the MOSFET get. So take that into precaution. Don't forget to check out the project page for more details on how to make this project. And let me know what idea you'd like to cover next. Submit or vote for your favorite ideas at tinkernut.com slash ideas. Click here to watch my last video, and if you'd like to support my show, please feel free to like, subscribe, comment, follow me on social media, or donate at tinkernut.com slash donate. Alright, that's it for this tutorial. For more, go to tinkernut.com.